grow tents, aka portable indoor grow rooms. Call them what you will, there are lots of brands, shapes, and sizes, and at first glance, they all kind of look the same. Big black boxes with zips and a few tactical holes. Online, you can pay less than 60 bucks for something that notionally fits this description, and on the other side of the pay scale, you can part with several thousands of dollars for the largest models from premium brands. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what to look out for and what to avoid, so watch me unzip and let's get it on. <laughs> Grow tents are a thing because they allow you to hang grow lights and set up a light tight indoor garden in minutes with no tools, drilling holes, or screwing in hooks, making them ideal for renters or for those of us with OCD partners. Grow tents also help protect your plants from bugs and increase the amount of incidental light intensity on your plants by bringing reflective surfaces up close on all sides. They also allow you to utilize just part of a room for growing, meaning it's possible to use a spare corner of an office or bedroom for reading clones or keeping a mother plant without foregoing the room's original function. Grow tents are easy to take down and quickly move should the desire for portability suddenly take hold. Unless you're growing non-photoperiodic plants and you don't mind light leakage from your tent, then I recommend paying a little more for one that's certified to be light tight. This gives you complete control over the day-night cycle without the need to black out the windows of the room in which the tent is situated. Okay, let's talk about size and shape. Obviously, measure the space you have available twice. No, three times just to be sure. Not just your floor space, but the height available in that space too. For instance, up here in my attic, I have to take this handy wooden beam into account as well as the slope in the ceiling. Marvelous. Shorter grow tents are fine for rooting clones and starting seedlings. For instance, you can cram six full-size propagators in a clone lab, taking up just over eight square feet of floor space. Whatever size you do, go for. <laughs> Make sure that your grow tent can easily accommodate any grow trays that you intend to use, ideally with a few spare inches at all sides. However, over and above the length and width, the height of your grow tent is most important to get right, specifically that it's compatible with your grow light wattage and application. Remember, the more powerful your light, the larger the minimum distance required between the top of your plants and the lamp. For vegetative growth, I'd recommend some Thing like at least six feet high. These Sun Hut Blackout 100s are a great option over six and a half feet high, 201 centimeters to be precise, and perfect for an LEC 630 or a 400 to 600 watt metal halide. That gives you plenty of room to grow plants a foot or two high. When growing flowering and fruiting crops full cycle, the taller the better. You don't want to run out of vertical space and remember that you need at least an extra foot above any grow tent to accommodate extractor fans and ducting. The Sun Hut Fortress is a premium brand with models ranging from 7.1 feet to 7.3 feet high. That's around 216 to 222 centimeters. At this height, I'd only recommend using a 1000 watt lamp and air cooled fixtures. For double ended HPS, the ACDE reflector is an ideal choice. Grow tents do go taller, but then again, you have to be sure you have enough height available. The Mammoth G2 measures 7.8 feet, ladies and gentlemen, 240 centimeters, but I'd still be wary about fitting this out with 1000 watt DE HPS open reflectors, with the possible exception of a Digest Wing Avenger fitted with a super spreader. <gasps> Most grow tents are either square or rectangular, although some are designed to fit into corners and some even have pitched roofs. Rectangular grow tents tend to be around twice as long as they are wide, but not always. Bear in mind that most HID grow light reflectors create a rectangular spread of light given that the lamp naturally sends more light out to the sides than the front and behind. If you're using air-cooled reflectors, be sure your grow tent has side air ports to accommodate ducting in and out. Look for additional ventilation ports on the bottom for bringing in filtered air and on the roof for extractions as I already said. Most grow tents have additional smaller ports handy for power cables or irrigation lines or if you and your wife choose to do a little role play. Materials. Most grow tents are black, but I have seen some rather chic beige ones around. More importantly than the color of the outer layer is the reflective inner layer and in light tight models sandwiched in the middle, there's actually a third light proofing layer. Most growers in North America prefer tents with a silver inner lining, however, white line tents are popular in Europe. Is thicker better? Ooh, trick question. Well, that's a matter for debate. Certainly, thickness can be indicative of a higher quality product overall and will arguably provide you with better insulation, but it shouldn't be the only metric you take into account when making a purchase decision. Zips, for one thing, arguably the part of your tent that you'll use the most. As for viewing windows, they are invariably located up too high, so all you can see is the tops of your reflectors. I love having access doors on at least two sides of the tent. This is really handy for plant access, even with smaller models. Some models even offer 360 degree access. Very handy for plant inspections, but of course, don't forget to position your grow tent so that you can access it from both sides. Other stuff, a sturdy frame, of course, preferably made from galvanized steel. Pull diameter is one indicator of strength, usually between 16 to 25 millimeters, but this tells you little about the thickness of the steel itself, typically around 0.8 millimeters. Obviously, thicker tends to be stronger, but also heavier. Some manufacturers crow on about their poles being powder coated, but note this can also serve as a handy way to hide rust. Your tent frame strength needs to cope with what you're going to be hanging. My buddy Aaron would weighs around 240 pounds and tells me he does pull-ups on the fortress middle cross beams. And no, I'm not going to demonstrate. However, I will say that for any grow tent covering 60 square feet of floor space or more, I like to see a center vertical support pole. Be sure to check the quality of the spot welding and make sure that it's consistent. Removable floors or inserts are awesome and always make cleaning so much easier. And make sure that you find compatible accessories, especially my favorite, soft mesh netting, which is a must for plant training. 
I prefer plastic reinforced corner pieces over metal as they're generally less prone to tearing the tent and won't rust. I'll definitely recommend going for a decent brand rather than cheap knockoffs online. You really get what you pay for. Sun Hut Big Easy for budget, Sun Hut Blackout, and Sun Hut Fortress for premium. Homebox, Grow Lab Mammoth, and Secret Jardin are all great choices too. Of course, if I missed your favorite, then please let me know in the comments. That's it. A big bulging tent of love to you all. This is Everest zipping up.